go. You ready to go? We're ready to go. Go ahead. And then, in order to work on my damaged valve, doctors oh, literally man. stopped my heart. And I'm ready to stop the heart. For one hour, the only thing keeping me alive was this heart and lung machine. When my heart is stopped, am I dead? No. Not by any stretch. No, the machine is circulating all the blood that your brain needs, and the oxygenating part of the machine is adding oxygen, doing the work of the lungs. Once my heart was stopped, a nurse brought the new valve to Dr. Smith, who then removed the flawed valve and sewed the new one into place. I have a cow valve, yes? Correct. The cow valve looks exactly like this, uh, so your valve looks quite a bit like that. I remember nothing of this surgical construction site. I was happy to sleep through it while my daughter anxiously waited for an update. Dr. Smith called. I heard him say, you are out of surgery, you are in recovery, and you are okay. There was something angelic about you. I always loved you, but at that moment, it was like a different connection was formed. My daughter took a picture of me sitting up. I'm smiling away and reading the newspaper. I was in the hospital for about 10 days, but I wasn't in pain. I kept hearing how painful this was. It wasn't. Was I a typical patient? You were typical in that you had some setbacks. I didn't know I had setbacks. What were my setbacks? You were anemic. Really? And reluctantly, we had to transfuse you. You had something called atrial fibrillation, which had it persisted would have required you to be on blood thinners. But with medications, that resolved. You don't remember. Hey, I don't, Doctor. I thought I had no problems at all. That's one of the great things about open heart surgery is that people don't remember their time in the hospital. I almost thought I had a good time, <laughs> although I don't want to do it again. No. The major symptom you have is enormous fatigue. I could barely make it from my bed to the kitchen. Good judging. If you walked six steps, you were exhausted. But it was over. I was alive. I was even told to gain weight. And for the first time in years, I stuffed myself on bologna sandwiches and hot dogs almost every day, and then walked it off in the park. They were paparazzi. <laughs> but it was a good thing that they took a picture of me because people realized that I wasn't all curled up in a fetal position. Are you feeling OK? How do I look? You look great. That's all I did. By the way, you want to see my scar? You're looking at it. It begins right here and goes down to right here. And it's almost invisible. My home looked like a funeral chapel, flooded with flowers and cards. I was very touched. But by July, two and a half months after my surgery, it was time to go back to work. President Obama decided that he wanted to be in The View, the first time a sitting president had ever been in a daytime talk show. Well, I had to be on, didn't I? Look, I was trying to find a show that Michelle actually watched. <laughs> I had never felt better. But my official return didn't come until September. I walked on that set. What a wonderful feeling. And the audience stood up and applauded. And my pal, David Letterman, who had had open heart surgery, was our special guest to greet me. I was back. Next. David Letterman's own story of tears and laughter. Where did they get the new arteries from? Ace Hardware. <laughs> At H&R Block, we find money others missed. If there's any way I can get a few extra dollars in my bank account, for me it really does matter. Especially right now, times are hard. We want to get back every dime due. If you're not using H&R Block, you could be leaving money on the